in this video I'm going to talk about G protein coupled receptor or GPCRs so here you can see on the surface of the cell membrane you can see a seven transmembrane domain receptor transmembrane is a portion which is incorporated inside the cell membrane so it has seven transmembrane domain each transmembrane domain containing alpha helices and this receptor is also known as serpentine receptor and this receptor is associated with a trimeric G protein and this trimeric G protein has three subunits alpha beta and gamma this alpha subunit usually binds to GDP when it is in a inactive state and now what happens upon ligand binding to the G protein coupled receptor these trimeric G protein undergoes a conformational change and this trimeric G protein now exchange is its GTP with GTP this trimeric G protein alpha subunit exchange GDP with GTP once bound with GTP this alpha subunit is activated now this alpha subunit as you can see is dissociated from this beta gamma partner and this alpha subunit can go uh, and activate adenylate cyclase so here you can see the adenylate cyclase enzyme and this adenylate cyclase enzyme it can perform uh, the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP now cyclic AMP is a very important second messenger note that ATP cannot be a second messenger because there are plenty of ATP in the cell so cell need a distinct type of structural molecule to be a second messenger and that is why cell chooses cyclic AMP instead of ATP or only AMP however cyclic AMP represented as this dotted structure will go and bind to protein kinase A or also termed as PKA so four cyclic AMP molecules bind to this regulatory domain of protein kinase A as you can see protein kinase A has two basic type of domains and it has four domains two regulatory domain two catalytic domain so cyclic AMP binds to the regulatory domain and releases the catalytic domain the catalytic domain migrates to the nucleus here you can see the catalytic domain migrates to the nucleus and it's phosphorylate the Krebs protein the Krebs protein is cyclic AMP response element binding protein so this Krebs once get phosphorylated it will bind to the cyclic AMP response element and it will help to transcribe many important genes so one good example of this G protein coupled receptor mediated signal transduction we can find it in uh, chemokine signaling all the chemokine receptors are actually G protein coupled receptors however if we want to see the um, Krebs structure the cyclic AMP response element binding protein structure we will see that it has a uh, DNA binding domain as it will bind to the DNA so it must have a DNA binding domain it has a C terminal DNA binding domain it also has a site where this phosphorylation occur now another type of signaling downstream signal can be carried out by this same receptor and ligand interaction and that is via phospholipase C gamma beta and that is via phospholipase C beta this upon a different ligand binding this trimeric G protein will be activated and this alpha subunit will dissociate alpha subunit will go to phospholipase C beta and activate it and phospholipase C beta it will cleave PIP2 phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate and it will cleave PIP2 into IP3 and DAG so IP3 is inositol triphosphate it's another important second messenger and DAG which is diacylglycerol so it's another second messenger it is also important for activation of protein kinase C and in protein kinase C function so as you can see if we highlight this PIP2 molecule it will look like something this it has an inositol group here it has a phosphate phosphodiester type of linkage now it has a chain where two fatty acid 
is linked so plc gamma or plc beta any phospholipase c will cleave in this area so phospholipase beta or phospholipase c gamma anything will cleave in this bond however when ip3 is generated it's a second messenger so it will carry the signal and it will go to the er the endoplasmic reticulum on the endoplasmic reticulum it will bind to specific channels and it will open the calcium ion channels so the uh, stored calcium ion in the er will get out into the cytosol here you can see the stored calcium ion will get out in the cytosol and this calcium ion can also activate protein kinase c or this calcium ion can uh, bind to cam kinase and it can impart its function so this g protein coupled receptor signaling is essential for chemokine function and if we think about the clinical point of view it's very important because cholera toxin atp adp ribosylates the g protein actually cholera toxin put a adp ribosyl group into the g uh, in the in the g protein so it will modify this g protein by putting a adp ribosyl group once it put the adp ribosyl group here it uh, actually activates the gtp the alpha subunit bound, bound with gtp and uh, upon activation it will be activated forever i mean it would be activated constitutively so once it is constitutively active all the downstream signaling pathway will be there so what happens in the cholera the cyclic amp level goes up and the protein kinase activity is also increased so what happens this protein kinase a as it is a kinase it phosphorylate the exchanger of uh, sodium and hydrogen in the intestinal epithelia and it also phosphorylates cftr so however the ultimate result is the efflux of sodium chlorine ion and also the water into the gut and that results in severe diarrhea so this is how the uh, in cholera g protein comes into play and this is how g protein is important okay thank you like subscribe and please comment